One of the main things that God told Moses when he was up on the mountain was that God wanted to live among his people, in the middle of his people. He wanted to be a part of their community. Can you imagine if God came and lived right here in our community? What if he just rented a house right down the road from where you live? That's what he wanted. He wanted to be right close to his people. And so he showed Moses a plan up on the mountaintop of a tabernacle. A tabernacle is like a church that is a tent church. And it was a big tent. And he told him, when you get down off the mountain, this is what you're going to build for me. And I've picked two men, Aholoab and Bezalel. And I've given them the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be able to build this tabernacle. They know how to work with yarn and they know how to work with metals and gems and they can do it. But you need to go down and tell the people that you, that I want to be their God and I want to live in the middle of them. And you, when you build this tabernacle, you'll put the tabernacle right in the middle and then the priests are going to sleep around the outside of that. And then all of the rest of the Levites and then all of the people of Israel will live around my tabernacle. And I will come with my cloud and I'll land right on the tabernacle. And when I'm there, you'll see the cloud. And when I get up and move, the cloud moves, it'll be time for the people to move too. So Moses went down and he told the people that they were going to build this tabernacle. And he said, you can bring an offering to the Lord. You can bring gold and silver and bronze and yarn and goat hair and ram skins and acacia wood and olive oil and spices and gems. You bring all that stuff. And then from that stuff, we will build the tabernacle that I saw when I was with God up on the mountain. It was a sanctuary, a place where God was going to live. And, um, he told them how to make it. He told them, first of all, how to make the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant is the place where God's spirit lived. And I always think it's about the size of a piano bench. And it was made of gold. And on the top of it, it had two gold cherubim with their wings opened up. Cherubim are angels. And they had their wings opened. And they were looking at each other on top of this chest. And the chest had... Um, long poles on the outside of it that the people, the priests could carry it from place to place. And in it is where they put the Ten Commandments. And later on, they did put other things on it, like Aaron's rod that budded and a jar of manna. But that was the place where God would meet with them. And that Ark of the Covenant was in a special part in the tabernacle that was called the Holy of Holies the most holy place in the tabernacle. And then after that, there was a bigger part where the priest could go in. And that part had a lampstand with lights on it. And it had a table for the showbread. And every day, God's people would make bread and lay that bread out for God. And every day they would come in and light the lamps. And every day they would come in and burn incense beautiful smelling perfume for God. But that part where the priest came in was separated from the most holy place. And the only thing that was in the most holy place was God. And one priest could go there once a year. So he told him how to do that. He told him how to make the curtains and how they um, made, took the yarn and made the fabric and then make the curtains. And how they made the poles, how big the poles were supposed to be, and then the curtains hung on the poles the whole way around, and then how they put ram skin or porpoise seal, porpoise skins on the top of it to keep the water from getting into it. God told them how whenever they were going to move to a new place and the cloud would get up and leave, then how every piece needed to be moved and who was going to move it and how it would be moved, which things could be put on a cart, which things had to be carried by hand. God told them him that he was supposed to take his brother Aaron and put special, special clothes on him and put a sign on his head that said, holy to the Lord and a breast piece on his chest that had, um, 
special gemstones in it, gems for each of the um, tribes of Israel. He told him all of these instructions. And then Moses come down off the mountain, came down off the mountain. And after he came down off the mountain, he told the people what to do. He got Bezalel and Aholiab and they did the work and they built this big tabernacle for God. And then they set it up. And when they set it up, they put anointing oil and blood on Aaron and on his sons and put the special clothes that they had made and the ephod and the breastplate and all of these things that God had showed them how to do. And after they got it all done, God came, the cloud came and it settled right over the tabernacle and Moses couldn't even get in the door because God was in there. And then after a couple of days, God wanted the people to move and the, it went up, the cloud went up and the people followed it. And every night when the kids went to bed, they would see that fire burning, the fiery cloud of God right on top of the tabernacle. And they would know that their God was right there in the middle of their camp and that they were safe. You know, God has always wanted to live among his people. Back when he first created people, he put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and they were husband and wife and they got themselves into trouble by sinning. And before they sinned, God always lived with them and he always took a walk with them every night. And then that got broken because of sin. And then when we have the tabernacle, God wants to live in the middle of his people. When they built the temple in Jerusalem, it was in the middle of all of his people and the people came to the temple. Now, we, where does God live? He lives inside of us. And the memory verse says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him will not die, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Dear Father God, it is very good to know that you want to live in us and that if we believe in you, you send your Holy Spirit to live inside of us and make us new people, people who are able to worship you, people who are able to bow down to you, people who are able to say, he is my God. He is here to protect me. He forgives my sins and gives me hope. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for being our God. In Jesus' name, amen.